Are you going to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, my name is Jimmy. It's boring. And uh, I, I saw your videotape on how um, you move objects, and it was terrific, just amazing. Uh, the only problem with you and the difference between you and me, you went and showed it to the government, <laughs> and they took it away, and I'm not showing mine to the government anymore. anymore. I showed it once, but they didn't believe me. So um, real quick, I want to show you my engine, and this is a two-cylinder engine. Uh, 400 horsepower and I move objects this way along on wheels like a bus, a truck, <laughs> a car, an airplane with, uh, this is free energy, there's no input and basically I work on a, on a vacuum. Both of these cylinders are totally vacuum with uh, inert gases, helium and uh, the other five gases which are xenon, krypton and neon. And uh, what I do is I take energy from one solar transfer from this one and take energy from this one transfer through all this maze of wires. I don't have any power at all whatsoever. The power must come from the empty cylinder uh, to the firing cylinder. And then the firing cylinder switches it back to the empty cylinder and fires the empty cylinder and back and forth and so on. I use a coil just like a regular car. And I use uh, 24 volts, so that's the only input I have, 24 volts. This is an alternator down here. And this is just like a regular car, and all this alternator does is uh, charge up the batteries. It's not hooked up yet. Charge up the batteries, so, so we keep 24 volts always. Like your car, just you got to keep it all charged up. Um, around this side, John, this is a tiny can that we built. And basically, I time the firing sequence of the spark plug. That's all. It's four, and it it times the coil because each coil is separately uh, functioning. And um, and these are the switches here for the various coils with a timing sequence. So basically, I have the coils, the timing sequence, and then I have capac uh, resistors over here. These are variable. And, and the reason for the resistors is I create so much energy here that I have to get rid of most of it. Basically, I create somewhere around 1,000 volts with about uh, 600 plus amperage. And the volts are fine. I can use the volts. I can't use the amperage because they'll burn my electrodes. So what I do is I get rid of all this energy, uh, 600, maybe 1,000 amps. We could use to light up the house, but for the time being, I don't need it, so I get rid of it. And that's about it. Down there, I just have two batteries. And uh, actually, the two batteries are just for the spark plug, to fire the spark plug, and to put 24 volts. These coils will take 24 volts, and that's the only reason for the spark plugs. And the engine basically runs by itself in a vacuum in a void, and the energy comes from the vacuum and the void. Now over here, we're going to move real quickly over to a one-cylinder engine. And I started out with this one-cylinder engine. You, we have a small Tesla coil here. And like you, John, I got a bunch of old parts. <laughs> Most of this came from electronic sales. And this is an old 1930 switch here. And I got a bunch of old other switches here you can see. Um, I, I, I have a system here. Uh, this is a uh, variac which I can adjust the RPMs. This is strictly RPM, and this is an old beat-up distributor that I use. And once again, the coil and a spark discharger here. Tesla coil and the cylinder here with two coils. Normally, I use three, but I wanted to see the reaction. I wanted to see, you'll have to see the videotapes. I wanted to see what is happening in this empty chamber, in this vacuum chamber in which I have a spark, like your car, but no gas, nothing, empty nothing. And the biggest explosion happens in there, and this piston here is slammed down, and there's no way in the world even five guys can pull this piston down, and it'll turn the crankshaft, and of course turn the, um, the car, or the bus, or the truck. Uh, over here, John, real fast, is an old, lab in which I use to treat the gases. 
And here I have a, a, a Tesla coil situation in which I have, these are coils wound one way. Inside here, there's another coil that's wound the other way. And then here I have a focus coil wound this way, and the other side I have a focus coil, coil found, wound the other way. And then the gases come right through here, and I treat them. Here I, I get these tubes, and I break them up, I put a new envelope, glass envelope, and I put stems on it so my gas comes in here and I bombard it with uh, gamma, ray, uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, cathode rays. And once they're bombarded with cathode rays, then it'll go into another uh, component. Um, I have x-ray tubes, I have um, high frequency tubes. This is a high frequency tube here. Actually, it's a, it's a cathode ray tube. And this is a cathode ray tube, and I take and put little holes in there and put little stems and run my gases in there and treat them. This is a reverse polarity tube. And these are iron filings that I use to affect the gases as the iron filings are magnetized through a focus coil. And I have some more high frequency tubes. These are hydrogen retention coils, and of course, my vacuum gauge. Uh, over here, real fast, John, is my piston. Very different from a car piston. It's hollow. <laughs> Empty. So this is a vacuum. I draw a vacuum through here, and this one goes in here. And this will go up and down with a crankshaft. This remains steady. This is bolted onto the other engine. And I have uh, an anode, cathode, copper, negative, positive. And these are electrodes, and this is tent loom in which I create X-ray, gamma rays, etc. in here, which affects the gases, which affects the vacuum, which affects the positron. This is just a um, um, vacuum tube in here, and my gauge is over here. And, and, and I tested all these gases in here, and you can see the big explosion, you'll have to see my video, the big explosion, and since this is plexiglass, carbon uh, derivative, it pulls the carbon atoms and of course I get sun. But that was only for the purpose of looking inside the atom to see what the release of energy looks like. And you can see all of them are basically the same way. And we had hundreds and hundreds of experiments and we were able to see energy being released by the atom. And then over here, I'm doing a brand new lab all together. And I can test gases in here. And we can look, I guess, once again, we have, we have Windows 99, 96. <laughs> and we can see our gas and I test them in here with high frequencies and always in a vacuum. This whole system here, John, is in a vacuum. Uh, this is a purifier in which I eliminate from my gases any radiation from cos what I call cosmic radiation, which would affect my gas. My gas has to be totally pure of cosmic radiation. That's what this little gadget is for. This is an ion gauge tube in which I ionize my gases to perfection. And these also, I'm still, as you can see, I'm still working on it. <laughs> Maybe I'll be ready for your next birthday. <laughs> And this is a, um, an argon depolarizer. And this is basically my, um, my control panel. Very simple, not very complex. And over here, I have a magnetic coil. Actually, I have four of them. And I have magnetic coils, high frequency, and then my gas going through the center. And as you can see, we're not quite ready yet. But anyway, we're here, maybe a couple months. I'll prepare my gases here and they're ready to be put into the engine. And then, of course, the engine's ready to run for the next 10 years, I hope. <laughs> no input, no exhaust, no heat, no cooling system required, very little maintenance, one moving part. There you are. Happy birthday, John. Next time I'll see you. Uh, this is, uh, these are my gases now that I do buy, and you can buy them anywhere. They're raw gases. Helium, neon, argon, krypton. I'll buy them raw, I'll treat them over there. When they're ready, we put them in this little bottle, and they're ready to 
fuel any any of my engines anywhere in the world. So you can take this to the moon and fuel the engine, and we've got power up there for the next 10, 20 years. There's enough in here to fuel maybe 10,000 automobiles for the next 10 years. Not bad. <laughs> wow. Over and out. Thank you. Happy birthday, John. What do you I'm say to this? What? What do you say to this? What do I say to this? Yeah. Hubba hubba. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the beginning of the future right now.